I ain't trying to be no dog catcher. Why not? I don't even like dogs. That's the beauty of it. I grab a dog, and I choke him, and I, I kick the shit out of him. And I, and I, all day long, I foot up a dog's ass. I bang, bang, bang up his ass. That's my pleasure. Well, we're not going to be doing that kind of banging today, but we are going to take a look at four tools that I just got from banggood.com. So let's take a look at these four woodworking tools and see if they're bang good or bang bad. So recently, I've been on a Chinese tool kick. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, I even did a video on the website tamu.com. And I got a few decent tools from Tamu, but what I came to realize is that website's really better suited for consumables. Things like sandpaper, pencils, and other things that you really can't mess up. But since I gave Tamu a shot, I thought I'd also take a look at banggood.com, as this seems like another popular website where you can get cheap woodworking tools. But before we take a look at banggood.com, I did want to talk about a major personal concern that I have about all these Chinese websites. And this concern relates to a lot of small businesses, both here in America and in other countries, that spend a lot of time on research and development, creating the woodworking tools that we get to enjoy. And these websites like Tamu and Banggood don't seem to adhere to the patent laws that protect these small businesses so that they can earn the profit that they rightfully deserve. If you have a new idea and you haven't filed for a patent yet, and someone asks about the idea, Shut, Shut your freaking mouth. mouth! But never say freaking to mama. Let me show you just a few examples of what I'm talking about. Ever seen this? Well, this is the FastCap Steel Magnetic Micro Square, and I have one of these, and it works great. And this is a complete knockoff sold on Banggood for a fraction of the price. Here's another amazing tool that I have, the Incra T-Rule, and here's a complete knockoff sold on Banggood. And you know I love this one. This is the Hedgehog Featherboard. And here's a complete copycat sold on Banggood. And recently, I've been ranting and raving about these wood graphic tools. And this is the wood graphic multi-gauge. And here's another complete knockoff sold on Banggood. And my last example is this amazing push block sold by Microjig. And here's a complete ripoff available for purchase on Banggood. Well, that's enough of me being on a soapbox and stating my concerns about these websites. That's not what this video is about. This video is about finding affordable tools on banggood.com. So let's get started. So in today's video, you're going to notice a common theme. All these tools are going to be red. Oh, this is a big one. And since they came from Banggood, you know that they're meant to be a knockoff of woodpeckers. And these are all tools that I legitimately need for my shop. So let's get started and take a look at our first tool. So our first tool today is the five in one drawing tool. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. So one of the first comments I'd like to make about Banggood is everything is packaged very nicely and far superior to Tamu. Everything we're taking a look at today is very nicely packaged. And since we're talking about packaging, everything I got was packaged together, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. And I was able to have a tracking number and track all these items until it reached my doorstep, which was not my experience with Tamu. So if we take a look at the tool, you can see there's two knobs on it. The top knob allows you to loosen it up so that you can adjust the ruler. The bottom knob allows you to loosen it up so that you can adjust the angle on it. Once you have your desired angle, you can lock it down by twisting the knob. So what am I going to use this tool for? Well, I have a couple ideas. Let me show you. If I set this tool to 90 degrees exactly, I should be able to use this tool as a square. And since this tool has a lip, I should be able to rest it right up against the edge of my workpiece and create a perfect 90 degree mark. But let's do a quick test on that to make sure it's actually square. So I'll take my woodpecker square, rest it right up against that line and strike another line and you can see there's a little bit of variance between the two lines. So this thing isn't exactly square. And hopefully you can see how much variance there is just in a seven inch span. Seven inches. Yeah, I measured it many times. So we're not starting off on the right foot. Let me tell you why I think it's so hard to get square with this tool. And in my opinion, it's really for two reasons. Since the gauge on this tool is so small, it's really hard to tell if you're exactly at 90. The other problem is the lip on this tool is so small that it can easily wobble back and forth. Very similar to what you get with a Polini pocket roll. 
Now another function that this tool claims to have is the ability to mark angles on your work pieces. So by loosening the knob and adjusting my angle, I can strike a line on my work piece, but there's a major design flaw here. And that flaw is that the zero point is on the opposite side of the tightening knob. So when you go to rest it on your work piece, that tightening knob won't allow the tool to sit flush. Well, that's two strikes now, so it's not looking good for this tool. Let's see if it can do the final thing that I purchased this tool for. So the final thing that this tool claims it can do is to create circles and arcs. However, the holes to create these circles and arcs don't have any measurements associated with them. So you're gonna have to do some math to figure out that radius. Now, if I place my pen into one of these circles, you can see that it actually doesn't even fit my workpiece. So this thing doesn't even create circles and arcs. And that's because the ruler sits too high above your workpiece and the holes aren't big enough to allow your pen or pencil to be able to touch your wood so that you can scribe your lines. And I think three strikes are enough to call this tool from Banggood straight up bang bad. That's something else. Well, that unfortunately covers our first Banggood tool. Let's see if we can redeem ourselves with the second one. So our next tool is all about setup, whether you're doing it over at the table saw or the router table. And I have a couple of brands of setup blocks that I use all the time. And I really wish I could show them to you, but as you can see, all my tools are being stored away so that I can be ready for my upcoming renovation. I need you to fix this place up. So I'll give you 24 hours. So instead, I'll show them to you virtually. Two of my favorite types of setup blocks are the standard setup blocks, along with these Iano 6. These are the ones that I use almost every single time. Those setup blocks are somewhere in this heaping pile of mess. And both of these setup blocks are in Imperial, so that's why I thought it might be nice to get this next item. So what is this next item? So this next item are metric setup blocks. Let's unbox these and see if they're accurate. So once again, no complaints about the packaging. Everything was very nicely boxed and there was no damage. But what I'm really impressed with is the hard shell case that these setup blocks come in. There's also a nice foam insert to make sure that all the setup blocks are fully secured. Now, since I don't have any metric setup blocks, I don't have a whole lot to compare this to. But what I do want to do is to get my calipers and test out the measurements on each one of these items. Now the first thing that caught my eye was the larger piece. And I assume this is the equivalent of the Imperial 123 block. And instead this is 25 by 50 by 100 millimeters. So let's grab my calipers and see how accurate that is. And here you'll see I'll zero it out so that we can get an accurate measurement. And I'll first test the 25 millimeters. And here you can see we're spot on at 25 millimeters. Now let's take a look at the 50 millimeters. And here you can see there's a little bit more variance at 50.08. And finally, the 100 millimeters. And with this measurement, we have even more variance at 100.22 millimeters. Lastly, let's take a look at the smallest setup block, which is one millimeter and a medium sized setup block at 18 millimeters. If we look at the one millimeter, you can see there's a variance of 1.04. And finally, the 18 millimeter has a variance of 18.04. Now, out of all those setup blocks, the one that concerns me the most is the one millimeter block. Now, I'm not quite sure I'll ever use this block, but it does concern me that there's quite a bit of variance. Another concern that I have is that the setup block isn't entirely flat. You can see there's a little bit of a bow in it and you can see some daylight in between the straight edge and the setup block. And I tested out every single one of those setup blocks just to make sure that none of the other ones had a bow as well. And it turns out that the 16 millimeter also had a bow of approximately a millimeter or two. So this is a tough one for me. I'm not sure whether or not these variances are acceptable for setup blocks or if they're just way off. So I'm gonna let you decide. Leave a comment below and let me know whether or not you think these setup blocks are bang good or bang bad. Done and done. Well, that covers our first two bang good items. Before we move on to our third, I ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. 
Also, for all the tools we're taking a look at today, I'm gonna leave Amazon links in the description below so that you can go check out these tools for yourself. So if you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that I have a weird fascination with corner clamps. And I've got corner clamps in all different shapes and sizes. And once again, I'd love to be able to show you some of these corner clamps, but all my clamps are wrapped up in storage. But from my experience, some of my favorite are these red aluminum corner clamps that allow you to tie up your boxes before you add any joinery. But some of these clamps may just be a little bit too big for some of the smaller boxes you're working on. So that's why I took a look at this next tool from Banggood. So this next tool is the mini right angle clamps. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. Now I had never seen these L-shaped clamps in this small of a size before, and that's why I decided to check these out. Now there may be a reason why I haven't seen these L-shaped clamps in this small of a size before, as I'm a little bit worried that they're not gonna be able to provide the vertical and horizontal support I need to make sure my corners are perfectly square. And I don't think I need to go into detail for how these work, as I'm sure most of you have seen these or even have these in your shop. But now that I have that corner clamped up, let's test it out and see if it's holding square. So if I place my square into that corner, you can see that there's no daylight showing in between the square and the wood. So this thing is perfectly square. And this set comes with four L brackets as well as eight clamps, so you should be able to square up an entire box. Finally, a definitive Banggood item. I'm really curious to see what you guys comment about those setup blocks, as I'm tending to lean towards Bang Bad. Took long enough. Well, that takes us through three Banggood items so far today and only one more left to take a look at. And our last item is one that you may have seen on this channel before. And this was a tool that I also selected on Tamu, and I rated it as Chinese crap. However, I did think that this tool had some potential. So when I saw it on Banggood, I thought, let's give this tool another shot and see if my experience is any different with Banggood. And spoiler alert, it was. Let's go check it out. So this tool is the sharpening angle fixture. Let me show you why it's better at Banggood. So if you remember why I rated this as Chinese crap on my Tamu video, it was because I got one package with a fixture and one package with a honing guide. And I didn't get that honing guide until two weeks after the fixture. And I had no tracking information to know that I was getting that honing guide. But with Banggood, it all came together and it had a tracking number. See, the muscle shirt came today. Muscle's coming tomorrow. You get a tracking number? Oh, I hope you got a tracking number. That package is going to be smaller than the one you're currently sporting. So let's go take a deeper dive into this tool and I'll show you how it works. So with this tool, you're going to get three items. You're going to get the sharpening angle fixture, the honing guide, as well as the angle gauge. Now right off the bat, I can tell you that the angle fixture as well as the honing guide have a little heft to them and they feel high quality. If we take a look at the angle fixture, you can see that it can accommodate angles from 15 degrees all the way up to 47 degrees. And there's positive stops for each one of those incremental angles. So to adjust the angle fixture, you simply loosen the knob and adjust it to your desired angle. In this case, I'm going to move it to 35 degrees. Then I can slide this locking pin into place and then tighten it down to make sure it's secure. Next, let's take a look at that honing guide. It's the cocky sharpener who always has rounded bevels. You think you're good, but you're not that good. Don't sharpen freehand, always use a honing guide. Now one of the nice things about the honing guide is it does have a very wide stance in case you're doing something like plane blades, but you can also move these bearings to the inside if you're working with something like chisels. Once you have your blade in place, you twist the knob on the right hand side and it locks it down. And that honing guide is meant to be used in combination with that angle fixture. Let me show you how it works. So the first thing that we want to do is to take our honing guide and slide it into the notch on the angle fixture. Then we can open the jaws of the honing guide and place our plane blade in. Then we want to make sure that our plane blade is touching the plate on the angle fixture. Once it's in line, we can lock it down with the side tab. Now, since we had already set our angle fixture to 35 degrees, our honing guide should now be set to sharpen that plane blade at the same angle. So we can take our honing guide, flip it over, and begin sharpening on our stones. And this sharpening guide really is a heck of a lot easier to set up than many of my more expensive honing guides like my Veritas system. So I'm going to give this sharpening guide a bang good rating. 
Well, that's going to take us through all the Banggood tools we're taking a look at. We had some winners, but we definitely had some losers. And more importantly, we learned that a lot of these Chinese websites really aren't adhering to a lot of our patent laws, which are protecting our smaller businesses. So I'm going to leave some Amazon links to equivalents of all the tools we took a look at today so that we can support our smaller businesses. Well, thanks for joining me today on checking out my experience with Banggood. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.